Then they break up. He breaks it off. And she's like, well, I don't even know why you're making such a big thing. So in essence, what she's saying, I want this is what I want to do. I don't care what makes you happy. I don't care what makes you comfortable. I don't care that this is a thing that you that's important to you. I want you to do what I want you to do for me. I want to be in a relationship. I want to disregard your feelings. And I want you to be okay with that. I go, I don't understand why that's a mistake. And I would say that is the same in a friendship. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's no difference because, you know, you might want to fuck her. It, it's you're at you're teaching people how to teach how to treat you. Yo, 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 what's up, Square Print Brigade? On this episode, we have podcasters and friendship coaches, Matt Ritter and Aaron Cairo. Um, they're here and we discuss why men need friends, what the friends are all about, and how not to get isolated in relationships where you lose all your friends and then you have nothing to fall back on. Uh, this is a real good one. I, yeah, it's a it's a fun one, and, and we really get into like the different human psychology, uh, both for friendships and relationships. And if you liked it and you love the show, please support us by going over to patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content and the uh, extra shows. Like uh, uh, this week, we continue our conversation with Matt and Cairo as we discuss horrible controlling relationships, what role women play in your friendships and how much our our relationships how much of our relationships is our responsibility so all over that at patreon.com slash manschool202 also if you want any relationship advice uh i and dante are each doing consultations if you want to reach me you can email me at advice from harry at gmail.com and if you want to get uh dante to do some consultations for you you can go to dante nero.com and click on consult i'm not an alpha male I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't. Yo, yo, what's up, y'all? What's up, Square Pimp Brigade? Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, we got a little bit of a different show today, but um, I think you guys are going to enjoy it. Um, first and foremost, my partner in crime. What's popping, Harry? You good? Oh man, I'm I'm living the life, Dante. You know me. You don't have to ask me that. You know, I'm oh. living the best life. How dare you ask me? Am I doing good? It is it is ask polite. Me how is polite. how good am I doing? How good are you doing? My bad. Oh. My bad. I mean, I was just I was just being polite. So I didn't mean anything. Well, watch, it. you better watch that politeness. I know. That's I, all I'm geez. saying. You check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why don't you introduce our guests? Because this is going to be a goodie. That's right. Now, these guys, we got a, a, a unique group here. And uh, I believe one of them has been on the podcast. I do know, I know one of them has been on the podcast before. But uh, coming in, in with the Man of the Year podcast, Friendship Coaches, give it up for Matt Ritter and Aaron Caro, everybody. What's popping? What's popping, guys? What's up, guys? I'm good. Welcome, I'm good, guys. man. I'm I'm looking. At, this is an interesting thing that I'm in. I'm happy to have y'all on this because uh, I want to. Uh, you know, uh, there's a there's a few reasons why this is important to me. Um, number one, because I think the the, you know, this is a relationship podcast. We cater to men mostly, but women kind of chime in to see what we're thinking and what we're talking about. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take credit for the whole red pill and manosphere fucking i'm taking it i'm taking it kevin samuels all those dudes was uh oh we lost one we lost matt uh, well matt will hold on but we 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 started this shit so um but what what one of the things that you know everybody all the listeners knows that i always talk about we have three principles that we we um advocate is ace which is authenticity credibility and empathy um, those are the most important things. I mean, as as being, a, you know, in terms of guiding men to be better men. But what also happens is I think when you're very when you when you take on that path, which I believe that path is really righteous. Um, a lot of times you have friends and you guys have a you, you have a guy. You guys have a podcast about friendships and, and stuff like that. And a lot of men don't have that. And even the friendships that we have. A lot of times are the friendships that we've had and we don't, you know, we kind of just, we got a shitty friend who we keep around because they're, because they've, they've like grandfathered in and uh, 
Whereas I think a lot of times with women, um, they have groups of friends for different things. Like their friendship is very malleable. So um, if you could, either one of you guys can chime in and just tell me what the podcast is about. And let's let's get into the kind of the dilemmas and the stuff because I, I'm I'm always talking about this directly or indirectly. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for having us. We're super pumped. Uh, so me and Matt have been friends uh, since second grade. Uh, oh. We are from Long Island. Uh, and you do like each other. You do. You do like. I each mean, other. we have a we have a deep hatred that goes back. <laughs> 35 years it's like we're never going to get rid of each other (laughs) i honestly do not think we could do what we do if we if we actually didn't like each other we actually like each other quite a bit we do love each other we have i mean our friendships roll real real deep too deep we know too much (laughs) right too much you know it's funny because we will we will you know as men it's shut up and go to work you know we, we like so even if we're dealing with people doing business with people that we don't like you know, as being a man, you you get to show up, just shut up and show up. So, I mean, it's, in, it's, I think it's interesting when you work with somebody who you want to work with, as opposed to somebody you have to work with. It is. We've been friends for 35 years and we've only been doing this podcast for four months. And I think our friendship has grown leaps and bounds really? just from doing this podcast and doing a deep dive about real friendship and what it means. And just diving into all these questions about, you know, why are you even still friends with this person? Like maintaining those friendships, like you actually need the, the effort you have to put in to do that. Or, the, you know, when it's time to say goodbye to a friend, like what you're talking about, like sometimes we just keep toxic friends around. And we also talked about how women do certain things better than men of like, you know, different friendships for different things. Like you can just have a friend you go to games with and if they don't want to share with you, that's fine. Like you can choose to just be like, oh, that's my Knicks fan friend. And that's it. And leave it leave it be, you know, but the other, the flip side is if you want to be real, really friends with somebody, you know, at some point you got to be able to open up and, you know, be, be there for them when they need you. So our podcast is really about, you know, what it means to be a real friend. And as guys get older, you know, we noticed post pandemic, a lot of people were isolated and lonely. And so we're trying to just, you know, get back to the basics of like, how do you go out and make a new friend or how do you reconnect with a friend? And sometimes it just feels so daunting to reach out to a friend that you've known your whole life but you haven't talked to them and like certain time goes by and every day that goes by makes it feel harder and harder and harder to reconnect and it almost feels impossible and we're just trying to give people the tools to go hey no no no. you know how to do this you have friends you've had friends your whole life you just kind of like lost touch with them or you forgot to prioritize it you know that's really what it is society says hey you don't need to prioritize friends especially for men they're like go out and kick ass go find a girl go buy a house and you're good well it turns out you're not good you know, this lone yeah. wolf idea, like we need friends. It's, yeah. you know, yeah. biologically, like sociologically, we need friends and we're healthier. We're more attractive. There's a lot of reasons that tie into what you're talking about too, why you need friends. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I had a, I was doing a show and uh, there was like a 48 year old dude and a 52 year old dude. And they really liked my comedy and they were talking to me and they were like, Oh, we're going to come back next week and they came back the next week and then they came and then i was like but i you know like i'm so like i realized that we have the programming is like makes me skeptical it's like i'm 56 i'm like i'm not not, like these guys like me too much i feel like they're trying (laughs) to blow me you know what i mean i feel like they want to blow me (laughs) so it's like i don't know if i'm making friends at 56 like i don't know dude um, we talk a lot. We actually talk a lot about that because we have a lot of people in the 40s, 50s, 60s. And we go, it's never too late. But also, it does feel a lot like dating. So you're like, am I like hitting on this dude? Like, what's going dude, on here? Dude likes me a little bit too much. <laughs> well, sometimes and, and, it, it it does become like, uh, especially later on, when you have more standards as you get older, it does kind of become like dating and courting yeah. in a weird way because you got to go, is this person right for me? Because when you're young, everybody's your friend. You know, you could have a friend at any any time, any play. Oh, this part, you know, if they hang out two or three times, you know, you just as you get older, I just I use that word less and less of who I'm with. Like even the people I do shows with, I'm like, yeah, you know, they're a friend, I guess. I But I'm not calling them. You know, there was a, I remember there was a, a booker who I hit up after the pandemic, a comedy booker. And uh, he goes, oh, you hit me up. Uh, I didn't hear from you all pandemic. And I was like, bro, we're not friends. <laughs> yeah. I didn't hear from you either. Like, yeah. and, and it's fine. I'm not upset about that, but 
bro, it's a business. This, like this friend, this I friendship don't... is transaction, yeah. transactional. By the way, that's fine too if you both know it. Yeah. I think that's the other part. Communication. Also, it's hilarious. Like for somebody to go, hey, you didn't call me. It's like, dude, you didn't call me. Yeah, what yeah. are you talking about? What are you blacked out here? Like we're not friends. It's it's funny because um I got a uh I was I was home uh, a couple of days last week I think or maybe it was the week before the, Harry I don't even know if I told you this what? so I get a call from I get a call from Bobby Kelly right you know Bobby uh, yeah yeah sure yeah right next uh, to me oh yeah I love Bobby right so we get a call from Bobby Kelly he he goes Dante listen we're on the air because you know he's doing bonfire uh now because Dan Soda left bonfire on Sirius XM. And Joe DeRosa is on there, which is another one of my friends. Harry's one of my best friends. Joe is one of my best friends as well. Harry, did I tell you this? You did tell me this, but I was going to pretend because I'm your friend. I was going to pretend that. Wow. You know, to be my friend, you don't got to, you know, (laughs) I know. know, Um, And he goes, uh, so they were talking about where, you know, your friends and Thanksgiving. What if the apocalypse happened? Who do you got on your team that would help you survive? And then uh, Bobby and Joe are arguing back and forth. And so, Bar- you know, Bobby hangs out with Verzi and he hangs out with Paul Verzi and he hangs out. I forget who else. Yeah, I think Giannis. And he was like, ah, your, your crew sucks, right? They stink. You're all going to die and be eaten by zombies. And so Joe says, he goes, who's the first guy you would have at your table? And Joe says, Dante. And so Bobby goes, dude. Get the F out of here, bro. That's Dante's my friend, right? And so there was a time when Bobby and I, at least I thought Bobby and I were close when he first had his son. I used to go to all the birthday parties. I would always get great gifts. I would go to his house. But since then, he doesn't really call me. He doesn't reach out. He doesn't call me. He doesn't, you know, he never calls me. He does his podcast. He doesn't add me, you know. And that, and that's fine because it's, it's whatever I have. And, and so he has Joe call me. He no, he calls me up. He says, "Dude, I mean, you know, Joe." He says, "You and Joe are best friends." I go, "Absolutely!" Like I profess it. Which <laughs> and Bobby goes, "But didn't, but but didn't Bobby?" Wait, hold on. The, you're missing one key. And as a friend, I'll add this. I'm go gonna ahead. throw that Don't in there just a lot. Tell the story, the sweet spot for you, Harry. Stop acking like you're Bob- doing this as a friend. <laughs> My favorite part is Bobby goes. Me and Dante are way closer. To you and Dante to Joe. He's like, dude, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he can't be your best friend. I'm closer to that. I don't know. Which, yeah. by the way, nobody asked him to do that. That was not no, no. even in question. This was no. a series about the apocalypse, but Bobby being Bobby had to turn <laughs> it into a competition, which just from from the logic. Uh, well, you finish the rest of it. But to right, me, so he goes, he goes, he goes, uh, you, you and Joe best. I go, absolutely. Absolutely, it's my boy. Absolutely, got his back, hundred percent. Yeah, but we was close. I was, I was like, Bobby, you don't call me, you don't call me, you don't check up on me. I go when I do call you, takes you three, four days to hit me back. I go, so it's it's fine that we're not, but I'm not pretending. And I think he was a little surprised that I was just so honest about it. Well, but you know, I, I mean that that's what it takes to be my friend. Is that you know, Harry will tell you. That, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't if you ask me a question, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. The truth. Don't ask so, anything you don't want to hear about, which yeah, I've tried to model Matt, my life after. You know, Matt asked me or we did a pot about red flags. <laughs> Is that what you're thinking about, Matt? Yeah. And what's your red flag for friendship? And I yeah. said someone who doesn't respond to tech to a text within like an hour. I'm like, yeah, I'm he, he's got a high bar. Caro's got a high bar. I'm, I'm more <laughs> forgiving about that stuff. But when you talk about like this one sidedness, you know, as you get older, it's like, why do you need it? You know, you want somebody that you feel like valued. Right. I'll like, tell you this. It, I've, it I've had, in that sense. Like you want to feel valued. By your friend. So then there's also sometimes there's this thing in the dynamic of the friendship. I've had friends where I'm like, oh, I feel like I'm a side character in your show. You know, yeah. where it's all about them and which is fine, you know, but I, I kind of want to do my own thing. But when when you can only be friends with them when they're the star of the show, it almost feels like, yeah, I'm a supporting character in your life, but it's not a 50 yeah. 50 exchange. And, you know, that, that doesn't I, work for me. I think that plays a lot into like when one of your friends has a lot more money than the other one that makes like the power dynamic a little weird in comedy where there's like a hierarchy if you're like. You know who who's headliner who's not. You know it's like 
all those kind of weird things that factor into not having an equal friendship. And you really have to strive for, you know, <laughs> I think having a pretty balanced friendship. I, mean, I don't know. I, I think if people, um, I don't know. I, I almost want to push back against that okay. because of the fact that if, if, if somebody thinks that that is what you, if you, if your value is based on those things, I mean, the same way I would say this to a guy in a relationship, if, if somebody thinks because of they have this or they have that, that they have a higher value, I probably don't want to be your friend anyway. So on a, on a base level, um, and I, and I think Harry and I have been best friends for a long time. Yeah, Harry. Yeah. Yeah. We've been. Just make sure, we, I'm just checking in. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> doing a couple of things there at once. But yeah, right, no. Pay we've attention because I don't want to be out we, here. Yeah. I'll tell you, we became you best friend friends. Go, That's true. I'm like, eh, what? Sorry. <laughs> Try uh, making sure the feed works. But um, yeah, we've been best friends for, I would say, since the podcast started. It was fairly quickly. So 10 years now. Like and I'm, you know, and I, I might have a, a you know, a different status in in acting or comedy or whatever, and yeah, whatever. But that that I don't, I don't. I mean, Harry, I've never made you feel uncomfortable. About not at all. That. No, not at all. Not at all. That you're in at fact. A, a, in fact, I'm the first person to you know. Hey, I got a guy. My boy would, you know what I mean? Yeah, always... you hooked me up with a lot of stuff. You've helped me out. You've, you've really, I mean, that's a genuine friendship. So it becomes... yeah, no, I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I think it's got to transcend those, you know, sort of. Yeah, but I think, but even with, with, you know, when I, I think with um, I think what Matt's saying is sometimes those things can create a power dynamic if you let yeah, them. They're not the a guy's requirement. A dirt bag. Yeah, if the guy's yeah. a dirtbag. Like when I did when I did Matt's. Matt, you still doing the movie thing or no? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, so when I did Matt's thing, it, like, I don't give you no, like, it's stuck. It's, it's, I just, I'm so happy to be around honest and good people because the rareness of being around people who, who, where the relationship is not transactional or it's, it's disingenuous. I'm just so happy not to have it because it's, it's so often is because, People really haven't gotten their own shit figured out and their insecurities, they put it on you. So, you know, it's a it's a weird thing. Mm. I I also feel like uh it, in some cases, um you so I, I give you a, a story. I had a guy who I was counseling, right? He had went to what you call it, uh Harry uh Cinnabons. The listeners knows this guy. We call him Cinnabon because he he um took his wife his wife he was always late for everything and they would go he would do these elaborate vacations and he took his wife on the on the on on a, a vacation and and he was like you know it was like it was like a romantic vacation with a limo and the like a second honeymoon of sorts yeah and they did and she would always be late and then she would be you know just not really respecting the time and whatever so I said, well, he asked me what to do. I said, well, the next time she's stop screaming, stop yelling. And if she makes you late and you miss the flight, miss the flight. Right. And now, and so she was like, I want to go, for, I want to send a bun. And he goes, well, you want to sit down and eat it? And she goes, yeah, I want to sit down and eat it. She sits down and eat it. They she knows, by the way, they're running late. They already know. And yeah. so, you know, and he could have said, no, we ain't got a fucking time to get a cinema. But he didn't. He just I said, just stay. He goes, yeah, sure. Get, get one. You should sit down and eat it. You want to sit down? And and, and it's because she's always never had to take, you know, be aware of time because it also wasn't her vacation it was something she didn't want. You know, it was like he was the 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 main guy. You know, he was the go to guy. So they get to the gate the, and the and the uh She's like, wow, is this flight is going to be empty. And he goes, no, it's probably left already. She goes, well, and he goes, well, you wanted to eat the Cinnabon, so you, I didn't want to argue with you. <laughs> now, what he did was they had to rebook the flight, and then, which I would have just went home, and then we could stare at each other for seven days, right? <laughs> because you don't respect my time, my effort, my so, so on and so forth. And so now I don't want to do it because he was like, yeah, but I would have lost the deposit. I go, yeah, but you rescheduled everything. You had, he had to go to a dip, book a different hotel. I go, use how much did you spend on the whole trip? He said, he said the whole trip was about five grand. I said, if you had lost $500 deposit, you would have saved 4,500, right? Because really we don't care 
we this was for her, you know. But the fact that she didn't even respect what he was doing, so but he's a so he's a fan of the show and kind of I counseled him. He had a but he since then he's divorced, right? So he's wow. back in the game. That came out of nowhere. Yeah, well, yeah, right. <laughs> did it really? Did it really? Um, and uh, he he he's divorced, and so he's back. He was dating again, right? And he's 58, 59, but he was, so I counseled him and he was pulling 20 year old strippers, 25, you know, just, it was just in threesomes. It was just, you know, he was a really good student. I, I've yet to have a student. you proud. you proud. And uh, he, he had a friend. So it was like this 26 year old girl who he had a date with her. She was late, whatever. She jerked him around another risk, not respecting his time. And he he has learned that, you know, he has to set these boundaries. So he had to set the boundaries. And the girl was like, I don't see why you've been. And he just he said, you know what? That's fine. Paid for the beer. And he got in his car and he left. Right. So his friend goes, oh, bro, she's she's gorgeous. She's 27 years old. You could have just did what you, you know, you could have just if you'd have just told her what she wanted to hear, um, you know, you could have got laid. So he's telling me about this. And I said, he goes, you know, did I do the right thing with this girl? I go, yeah, you did the right thing with the girl, but you, your friend basically said, depending on how hot the girl that you, that if it means your loyalty and your friendship compared to some hot girl, he will turn you in. He's not loyal to you depending on how hot the girl is. And that may never be a situ, uh, 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 you'll never have a situation that might, that might not happen. But the fact that I know that you're a disloyal prick who, if a, a, a fat ass and some big titties will make you, you know, just scrub our friendship or the loyalty to the friendship, I need to take that into consideration because this is this says something about your character. You know what I'm saying, Matt? So it's like a, and he ended up cutting his friend off too. Event absolutely, mm. absolutely, and when we talk about that. You on the uh, again with like the red flags of of friendship. It's like you know you don't listen. You don't need your friend to be everything to you, but there's certain values that you need to have like in your inner circle, right? And like loyalty is is obviously a non-starter. And showing up and you know respecting your time. Caro it sounds like Caro and Dante have the same uh, high bar on the. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if anyone's five minutes late, I'll never speak to them again. (laughs) Boy, wow. You know, I'm not mad at the, I mean, what about five minutes late with a phone call? Hey, I'm running late. How about that, Aaron? When is the, when does the phone call come? Does it come before the time they're supposed to be to give me a heads up? Oh boy. Oh boy. What if it's four minutes, four minutes before before you're supposed to meet? (laughs) It, for me, it would definitely be fee for, but I will. I give a. I kind of give a fifteen minute grace. Okay, well, we're not going to be good friends, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I think the way it works, and Matt, I'm actually curious what you think about this. Is that I also am very outspoken with what I expect. I have so that problem when our group of friends and Matt. Are coming to one of my events, they know, okay, when Cairo says noon, he means 1155. And right. if you don't put that out there in the world, which sounds like your buddy wasn't doing, then people walk all over you. Right, right. Well, right. the other thing I say too, on that note, Dante, and tell me if you agree with this, it's like, we talk a lot about how your friends, nobody is a mind reader. Right. Part. Like you put a lot out there on people, but you're not communicating it to them. Yeah. That's a little bit on you too. So sure. like, it sounds like Dante, you're good. And Cairo, you're really good about communicating your expectations in relationships, but a lot of people aren't, right? Mm-hmm. And so what you get back, what you give. So if you're communicating that you kind of don't really care if somebody walks all over you, what are they going to do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, go ahead, Kai. I was going to say, uh, what I'm, one of the things I'm curious about is how do you, how does, how do friendships change based on relationships? Is that something happen, that happens as much as when we get older? Because I think back in the day, you know, a relationship, if one of your buddies starts dating, somebody can completely change the friendship. Yeah, absolutely. And I was actually thinking, Matt, should, should we tell them how we came to become friendship experts and start this pod in the first place? Because I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, give them a quick background. We, we, we missed totally our good. we missed our backstory. So. Yeah, yeah. Sure, tell us. Tell us. Or Matt and I friends 
for since second grade, but we actually had the same group of nine best friends from about fourth or fifth grade, all from oh. middle school. And so every year on the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, the nine of us fly in from wherever we are in the country and we have dinner at Peter Luger Steakhouse in Brooklyn. Uh, and we vote on which of the childhood friends had the best year. And then that friend wins our man of the year trophy, which is this giant, like half a Stanley cup. That's got our names engraved on it. You get your name engraved that you get to keep the trophy for the rest of the year. And so it's totally subjective to you. You got to convince your friends. So like, you know, the things you're talking about, like with women and stuff, like in your twenties, you know, you you have your, you know, you get married for the first time you may win, but in your forties, you know, things are a little different. You know, maybe a second marriage doesn't even get you the the trophy, but you know, it answered your question about women and, and, uh, you know, we, we did a whole episode about wives and girlfriends and, you know, we've definitely had changes. I think if your friend gets into a relationship with somebody that you don't get along with, it kind of railroads your friendship and it's really almost impossible to continue that relationship in the same way. Mm. Well, do you think, do you think that that is the same for men um, and women in their friendships? No, because I, well, I don't know. You mean like can women hang out together the same way? Right, like like I, husband, like, yeah. If I'm dating somebody, I don't, yeah. I don't care about her friends. Like I don't. I mean, that's her time. That's her friends. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, double dating or something like that, if I don't like her, I just ain't gonna go. I'm just, yeah, I'm not. You know. Sometimes you got to suck it up. I mean, I'm single, and even I know that. Well, well, suck it up. When you say suck it up, what do you mean, Carol? What do you well, mean? Well, if, if if the friend is important to the girlfriend or the wife, and she wants you to hang out with her, sometimes you got to do it. I I I don't have a problem with the compromise. Um, making I mean because we I mean you know, relationships are always compromises. But if I don't like someone, I'm not sucking it up. I'm not going to stop her from hanging out with her friend. But I'm not going to hang out with somebody I don't like because let's be honest. I mean, the first thing, Carol, is that there's a you have a very rigid idea about and I don't disagree. I mean, I'm 100 percent. But I also understand a lot of times people, they they don't ascribe to that. So when we're saying somebody uh, like if somebody says uh, 12 o'clock, right, and they want to get on you because you even Matt is kind of like. You know, he doesn't fuck around. But the point is, it's it's if anything, your word is everything. So if you say 12 o'clock, it's not should be like, oh, Carol has a problem because he wants you to keep your word. Like, I, I don't like I like there's no wiggle room between what you're saying and, and what I what I think. I do understand that a lot of people aren't raised that way, that they should keep their word. But I think. At the at the baseline, what you say matters, and and I don't I don't disagree with you with that. You you, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but I also think you know Matt, who is very happily married, you know he spends I don't know 15 percent of his time hanging out with people he doesn't want to hang out with because. Well, I'll th- I'll put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> be- I don't want to throw you under the bus. I'm I'll joking. Just, I, I like listen. I like most of my wives' friends, right? Yeah. And the ones that I'm not that keen on. I can easily extricate myself and I can go do my own thing. It depends on the dependency and the codependency. My wife and I are not codependent. So it makes it a lot easier for that compromise to happen. But if you're in a codependent relationship with somebody and you feel you have to be around them all the time and they have people in their life that are around them all the time that you don't like, that's where it really becomes a problem. I think a lot of it is, you know, these sort of what is, what is the core relationship, right? So then if that core relationship is solid, you can figure out the compromises, right? But if that core relationship has issues, those compromises get a lot harder. It, it just, I kind of feel like, and I, and you know, I'm 58. So maybe I look at it a little bit different. I've seen more, more sunsets than I'm ever going to see, you know? And I realize that time is the commodity. And because time is the commodity, there's a lot of stuff that we put up with simply because, you know, I mean, first of all, I don't subscribe to happy life, happy wife. I don't think that's the case. In fact, that's never the case. In fact, when you when you operate in a relationship where you cater to the ego of your woman, that it's it will never stop. 
that will never ever stop. It's never a situation where you're with a woman and you're you're not speaking up and saying, I don't like this. Even if you say I like, I don't like this, a lot of times they don't give a fuck what you like. This is what I like, and this is what I want you to do. And I think a lot of times this this is why relationships don't last in the first place because nobody's honest. Like yeah. a lot of people are married to people who they don't want to be married to, that their yeah. principles don't line up. Yeah. So when you when you start to come, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with saying I don't like her. First of all, yeah. I'm not an unreasonable person. If I don't yeah. like somebody, there's a reason why I don't like them. I don't put my shit on nobody else. I don't want them to put it on me. Yeah. And I don't think that's a fair that's a fair boundary. Just like when Carol says, you know. 12 o'clock is 12 o'clock. Yeah. 12 o'clock. I mean, why would you say 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock if 12 o'clock is not 12 o'clock? You, you know what I'm saying? I think yeah. if you want your words and, and his thing, Matt, too, which I know you're a business dude, like you're kind of a, a wheeler and dealer. Do, the, the people who you want to do business with are the people who respect your time, respect you and say what they mean and mean what they say and maintain a level of credibility. Any, now, you will deal with, uh, you know, people who are less than that because you have to or because it's a transactional. But in my French, in my in my personal life, I will not do it. I'm not hanging out with your goofy friend who drinks too much, who says inappropriate things, who doesn't like me, who's too slutty or this or that or what's I'm just I'm and I'm not going to and you could go hang out with her, but I'm not. Yeah. I will not make that compromise. So because and if you do ask me to make that compromise, you're going to ask me. So it's funny, Carrie, because you said sometimes you got to eat it. I don't agree with that. It's it's if you're saying th if she's saying this is really important to me. I know you don't like her, but this is and I want you there. I'm all about that. But that's not a compromise. That's a favor. And I wanted to be clear to know that you I'm doing you a favor that this is not what I want to do and I'm doing it for you and I should get credit for that as opposed to, I know you like her. I don't really like her, but I'm going to eat. No, what I've learned more than anything is in terms of relationships in general, you have to be, you know, it's like we're talking about men's, you know, male friendships, right? And the boundaries are important. Why is it do men think that the boundaries are not as important when it comes to women or marriage or relationships? When I think the it's the same thing across the board. And I just think we give a pass and that's why people are so crappy in the first place. I guarantee you that any of your friends knows how they know how the standard that Caro is where he's at. And if they know, if they overstep those boundaries, there's consequence. Would I be correct in that? Well, first of all, can I, can I get this girl's number? <laughs> oh, which which girl? The girl that too slutty? Which oh, the slutty, too one? slutty yeah, too yeah, too drunk. Yeah, too drunk. Yeah. yeah, that's all that. I'll hook uh, you up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just say, first of all, I uh, I'm having a baby this week. Uh, Congrats, man! Yeah, so we'll do Wednesday. My wife is awesome. Kiro knows she she and I have a great relationship, and right. we're real, both very clear on what we need. And so, like everything's cool. Like she basically understands that I, you know, when I need to go out with my friends, like she's never. She's never called me in Vegas and been like, where are you? She's not like one yeah. of those people. And she's very clear with me. Like sometimes she needs to go do an Ojai trip with her friends and whatever. So it's pretty rare actually that I'm in a situation that I don't want to be in yeah, with yeah. her, which is nice. You know, but yes, I mean, look, I think all relationships, there's always somebody that you're not going to like as much as your spouse and your entire friend group. Like, that's just, I mean, I don't like none of them. Right. Like that's just life, right? Like that's just life. That's because so they're not my you. friends, you know, exactly. They're not your friends. Like if you put a gun to my head and said, would you ever rather hang out with your wife's friends than your own friends? Never. never there's not right. one, there's never going to be one time in my life where the answer is yeah. Like literally right. fucking never. Right. So right. like on some level, it's just like life is what it is. When you get married to a woman, you're going to be hanging out with her friends who are not necessarily into the shit that you and your your buddies are into. So you right. know you you're, you're gonna sometimes they're gonna be along for the ride, and that's the way it is. But I agree with you on the sense that like you should not be being around people you don't like and never expressing that to your to your significant other, yeah. and letting that rot the core of your own relationship, which is a hundred times more important. Yeah. 
Kayla, were you married before? Were you ever married? No. No. Um, so let me ask. So are you as as rigid with women that you date about the friends that you, you know, the way you are friends? Well, he's yeah. He's got an algorithm. He, yes, he's got an algorithm. Yes. Yeah. He literally I, has a spreadsheet for everything <laughs> he needs. I am very upfront about what I expect of and of every relationship. Matt, would you say that's yes accurate? Give me an example. Like if you're dating a girl, what what's the do you have the talk or do you wait till the, the boundaries are overstepped or what? No, I mean, well, usually it doesn't come to that, but like, you know, for instance, I need to I, I work out every morning at 6 a.m. That's mm-hmm. what I need to be healthy. That's what I need to be in a good mood. And so I try to explain, like, this is important to me. If you don't want to wake up that early, that's fine. But, like, mm-hmm. I'm going to get up that early. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes it could be an issue if they're like, well, I like to sleep in. You're waking me up. I don't want to get up that early. And those are things that need to be talked out as opposed to just saying, you know, I don't say this is what's going to happen. Use it or lose it. You know, my way or the highway. But I explain this is what I need. So it's it, Dante hates me. This is no, no, Dante's no. Life. I don't. I don't. I actually really dig you because I, 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 I like. I would take one of the reasons why. Let's be honest. I don't really like Harry, but he's oh, what? loyal. What? Now? <laughs> what now? Hey, wait a minute. This is a hard well, way to Harry find is, out. Harry, <laughs> Harry's a loyal dude, and I would take a loyal dude over. I, I'd, I'd take an honest dude and a loyal dude over anybody oh because to me that is the most important thing and so i think sometimes when you're dating depending on how hot the girl is you see guys will make compromises depending on how hot she is but what what you're really setting yourself up for like we in this podcast years ago we've been doing this podcast what 10 years now harry yeah and we used to tell guys all the time you got to be willing to take the l like you got to be willing to say no and walk away from the relationship. Right. And, but since then I've evolved into a situation where I go uh, cutting off somebody who is not compatible or somebody who doesn't respect or is not interested in making you happy is not a loss. It's not an L it's a win because you move these cretins out of the way so that you could find the people who you really want to find because somebody who I, I, I'll give you an example. I literally just did a consultation before we picked, before we, we, we signed on. And this guy was telling me he's, he's 50 years old. He would be considered what you would call a high value man. He makes about half a million dollars a year. He's dating this 27 year old girl he, the girl, you know, he, she, he's in Miami. So the, the girl hangs out. She goes, listen, I'm going to hang out. You want to come? And he goes, no, nah, I don't want to come. But just, she goes, well, I'm going to go hang out and I'll be home. I'll be home when back, back and I'm going to jump in bed around one o'clock. Right. She pops up at three o'clock. She comes in at three o'clock. He goes, now nah, he doesn't care that she came in at three o'clock. The only thing is like where me and Carol are the same, like, you said one, yeah. it's one, right? If you said three, three's okay too. Yeah. But don't say one and mean three. So he said, listen, this really doesn't work for me. He goes, she goes, well, I was just hanging out with my friends. You could have came. He goes, I'm not jealous because you hung out. I don't, what it is, is I need you say one, it's one. If you say three, it's three. If you say five, it's five is fine, but you can't say one and then and then just have this leeway. It's that's not cool with me. And she did it again. Right. He's 53. She's 27. Smoking hot bottle girl. The whole he he cuts her off. So he calls me up. He said, did I do the right thing? I said, this is somebody. First of all, she's 27, but she has a kid. Right. He's achieved a level of success that she probably will never. Right. He accommodates her. I mean, here's a guy who's dealing with, with a single mother. So when you deal with a single mother, you're dealing with her kid, too. She's 27. So he's got money. So she goes. They go places. They fly. They this, that and the other. And what he's asking is, say what you mean and mean what you say. The second time she did it, he broke it off. But he, he, he calls me up because he likes her. 
and he feels a certain way about it because he broke it off. And I said, let's talk about the subtext of what is going on with her. She's literally going, I want, first of all, he, he was hanging. She was a massage therapist. He, he met her. He had a threesome with her before. And he was like, I need a massage therapist. I'm going to just throw this chick the money because I know her. It wasn't, it wasn't even platonic. And they started, she was like, oh, I want to hang out. They started hanging out. She goes, I can't keep doing this. I want a relationship with you. She asked him. So now he's in his relation with this girl and her and her her kid. He's makes the she's directed this whole relationship in the first place. He's saying this is, doesn't work for me. It happens the second time and he cuts her off. And because he's been listening to us, he also said, what's up, Harry? But I'll tell uh, you about it later. Yeah. He goes, he goes, um, did I do the right thing? I go. This woman is saying she directed this idea of having a relationship. She gave him um she 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 he took her didn't ask for nothing. All he really asked was when you tell me something, mean it. This doesn't work for me. You can't keep doing it. And then she does it again. Then they break up. He breaks it off and she's like, "Well, I don't even know why you're making such a big thing. So in essence, what she's saying, I want, this is what I want to do. I don't care what makes you happy. I don't care what makes you comfortable. I don't care that this is a thing that you, that's important to you. I want you to do what I want you to do for me. I want to be in a relationship. I want to disregard your feelings and I want you to be okay with that. I go, I don't understand why that's a mistake. And I would say that is the same in a friendship. Do you know what I mean? Like it's it's no difference because you know you might want to fuck her. It, it's you're at you're teaching people how to teach how to treat you. I mean, and I get that a lot with guys who be like, oh, I know you're all about. I had one of my friends say, I know you're all about keeping that keeping your word thing. I was yeah. like, <laughs> we like it's can't a gimmick. be friends just from that statement. I ended the I yeah. said we can't be friends because if you think. Keeping my word is a is a Dante thing. We can't even be friends. You know, what I'm it, it just I think. But Thanks. when we well, goodness, you know, something that you said there, Dante. I want to ask, ask something because getting somebody, getting somebody, and training them to treat you a certain way is is actually how we should go about it with any relationship, whether yes. it's a friendship or uh, or a relationship. I mean, if you guys can speak a little towards that, like what is that process, or do you view it the same way? Because sometimes yeah, you do have to yeah, get friends we, to treat we, you a certain way. We joked that really what we've been talking about on this podcast is almost identical to relationship stuff. It's everything but the sex. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, you know, right. you really want to have a deep connection with your friends. Uh, if you're, if you, if that's what you're searching for, you know, again, you can have the transactional friend, you can have the sports friend, but if we're talking about like your core group and it could be one person, you know, there's no like, right number of friends but if for your at that inner core of friends like you really do want a level set and you know i i give Cairo credit for for doing a lot i mean i i happen to be a little bit more laid back personality wise and i probably learned as i said we learned more about each other in this podcast in the past few months than our 35 years is i learned that i actually want more out of my friends and that's something new for me like i realized like oh shit i haven't really been asking enough of my friends for what i deeply want because i think as a guy you're kind of just trained like Oh, that's a little bit like soft, you know, to be like yeah. asking these things of your friends. You feel it feels a little gay or vulnerable or a woman or whatever, you know, like all these things that you you have in your head of like, oh, I shouldn't be I shouldn't be talking to my guy friend about like this, you know, like you feel like you're so right, trained. Right, right, right. But it's like these are real it's a relationship, you know, that yeah. we got to and and you know, one thing we were talking about, I wanted to get you guys' take on this. I was excited to come on here because, you know. We, I think, I think Kara would agree or disagree. I think a man is a lot more attractive when he has a healthy group of, of male friends to women. Sure, sure. I mean, well, look, is it is it really? I, I don't know if it's you have health, you have friends that attracts them, but it's the fact of I think that what comes with having friends. Do you know what I mean? It, it's it's. You're you 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 are a person who emotionally is not going to be where you're looking to dump this on her. You know what I mean? Like where stuff that she may not even understand. You know, 
um, having a good friend to so I, like I've had dudes who I've helped with their relationships that I called, you know, that I I walked them through their relationship and they ended up getting engaged comics that we know. I'll tell you later if you want to know, but where then when they got married, didn't invite me to the wedding because. I stopped them. And, and this is what, you know, you say, Carol said, you don't like, I don't like you. I like you way more than, better than Matt. So that's, <laughs> 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 but I'm tough to you. But the thing is, it was me who, who taught him how to set those boundaries and make this woman stick with him, which is why she found him attractive in the first place. And then the minute he got married, he was like, he knew he he didn't he thought that I would be a problem like she didn't want to invite because he told her that she was talking to me he made the he made the mistake or the or the, the well right what basically system. what basically happened with him was that he followed the advice you gave him but didn't implement the system after the fact right so right. he basically took the sample packet and used it and then just proceeded from there and then went right back to his uh, same methodology yeah, and then she didn't want me invited because she knew that I had saw her for how she was disrespectful and 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 inconsiderate, and I called it, and so he didn't invite me to appease her, which probably right now he's got his nuts in a ringer, you know what I mean? <laughs> like it, it, because that's where it was going in the first place, and 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 so I think defining it is is really. You know, defining what you're willing to tolerate. And it's okay. I think it's okay to go, we we don't, we just don't fit anymore. And that's okay. You know, let's end the friendship. I, I, I this way, this way I'm not, you don't have to be angry because there's this emotional kind of assumption about I'm gonna tell you, yeah, I, I, you lie too much, you know, I, I and I don't want to be around a liar. You know, by the way, Cairo talks about this a lot on our podcast, other significant others. Um, the idea that it's it's good to have a friend that you share a lot of stuff that you don't have to dump everything on your girl. Sure, sure. Well, and who, vice versa. Who, yeah, I mean, who are we getting emails from, Matt? We're getting emails from wives who are like, my husband doesn't have any friends to hang out with. Get him out of the fucking house. Help him make friends. But what? But what? What is he your? He used to have to friends, that? though. He used to have friends. Yeah, right, right. At one What's point or another, response? he had friends. Yeah. Our response is: yeah. we agree. Yeah. Your your wife can't be your only confidant. Well, let me, let's be honest. You like what Harry was the point that Harry was making is he doesn't have friends because she destroyed the friendships because she. Oh, I see what you're saying. No, these, yeah. I think these are a little bit more that the guy. I think that's both, though. I, okay. I don't know, Kira. I think yeah. he's right. I think a lot. I think guys who end up with no friends and the ones who wives are like, get him off the fucking couch, probably fall into two categories. One, what they're talking about, like the wife had a lot to do with them mm. ending up that way. Or two, they were just so fucking lazy about their own relationships. And they were like, I'm good. I got my wife. I got my job. I got my kids. I don't need you guys. And they just let it all drift. And now they're sitting home alone and, you know, wondering where it went wrong. I, I would say that I think that it falls under the category of you end up in a relationship. And I think sometimes women choose to they think that the relationship is kind of retiring from being single and retiring from yeah. being an individual. And now yeah. you're a unit. And the thing is, though, what they learn after a while and guys have to adhere to that in their in their heads, because I don't want to create problems because it becomes difficult to go out. Yeah. You get like a little bit of a. Uh, uh, emotionally uh, manipulated, like, you know, why, why are you going out so late? Are you going out again? All that. So guys conform to that where they're like, all right, it's just my yeah, relationship. I don't, want no, I don't want no problems. Good. I don't but... want no problems. I'll just do it. Yeah. They conform to that. They just have the relationship. And, you know, when you have kids, it even goes further. And, and then what happens is eventually a woman is like, wait a minute, I don't want him around all the time. Mm -hmm. Now you hate what you created. Yeah. But now instead of taking responsibility, she's like, he, he's got no friends. Yeah. Help him get out of the house. He used to have friends. Everyone yeah. had friends. Yeah. yeah. And somebody that that has the the audacity to send an email to you about it. Right. 
is probably the person that has the audacity to destroy somebody's friends and then and then blame them for destroying them. I don't well, I will say this though, Dante. I don't yeah. think it's intentional or conscious. I think it's subconscious. I don't I, think I don't it's, disagree. I don't, I don't disagree. think it's yeah, I don't think it's women out there going, let me destroy the friends, but what I it will is, say is, it's selfish. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. I would say that. But I don't think it's I think every woman tends to do it, speaking in generalities. Uh I'm because very lucky. My wife was not like that. As I said, we don't have a very codependent thing and she's that's great. Know, always been independent. It's always been amazing. Yeah. I, I feel like when I go to a bachelor party, I'm the only guy that isn't like having to check in every five right. minutes. Let me ask you this. Does your wife go, hey, you haven't hung out with your friends for a while. When are you going to hang out with your friends? Does she do that? Does she actively? Yeah. So actually, it's funny. I actually almost canceled on during COVID. I almost canceled on flying out for this huge dinner. And she was like, what the fuck are you doing? The, I was like, I don't the know. The dinner. The dinner. For the dinner. Right, the dinner. Yeah. She was like, no, no, no. This means a lot to you. What are you doing? Your friends right. are everything. And it was weird. I was like, wow, she's so amazing. Like, I, I, I almost forgot for a moment myself. What is, what is your wife? I think wife it's the do? opposite, right? Uh, what does she do? Or? She works in events. You know, she's like an event planner. Okay. Yeah, but that's just, that's just the dope thing. I, yeah, I it's really great. This, yeah, I used to have this thing. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm torn between saying, wow, that's a really dope thing, to and the fact that I think that, wow, our standards are really low. In terms should be of normal. I'm with you on that. Right. That should it, be it, the norm. It be the norm. Um, I, I very rarely do I know women who go, yeah, you you should go hang out with your friends. How come you don't hang out with your friends? Secondly, I think that if they're not doing that, because men do that for women, well, go hang out with your friends, go this, that, and the other, go. And we do that automatically. I think a lot of, because a lot of time our default is, is not to create problems. Like we want peace and quiet so we don't get involved with it. Like, I don't, you know, I've, I've said to women, I've, look, like, I don't give a fuck about your goofy ass friends. That's your friends. You got to like them. I don't got to like them. And if they're annoying, I'm not going to be around them. I don't have no problem with you going to be around, but I wouldn't, I mean, I, I don't think that any of your group of nine friends would force their wife to come to this dinner. And, you know, the Patrice used to say this thing. You never have a bunch of guys hanging out, laughing, drinking, having a great time. And they go, you know what would make this better if my wife was here? <laughs> she tells great stories. She can she can uh, she can play happy birthday in farts. She's so cool. That never is the case. And I think that's what I think is what, what I wanted you guys on is because the perspective of that, the fact that you're approaching a need that I think men need because you a lot of times you can't you can't really show weakness to your wife and then expect her to find still find you attractive you know if you don't have a friend to kind of yo i'm 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 effed up i did this that and the other and you start because the minute you yeah that's cute for a while because you're vulnerable but then ultimately it's we're genetically built to go yeah, this is this is like you're being a pussy now. You know, <laughs> like, like how long? I mean, it's it's a weird thing. Like I watched even Harry transition where he don't he don't take a lot of shit, but his relationship before was, well, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't no, it all matters. You know, because, I was more passive about certain things, but also yeah. now I'm also, it's uh, re not reactive. I'm trying to be proactive with things too. Yeah. And go, I never want it to get into a bad because what I realize is if things go unchecked, you know, uh, to, to what Carol was saying, you know, if it goes unchecked, that becomes the standard. That type of yeah. bad behavior becomes a standard in a friendship or otherwise. So, yeah, I take less shit in, in every aspect of life. And I also think, you know, what you're saying, Dante, is, is right. Truth, like, you know, this is what I, this is why I wanted to go on to this idea of what I said about, you know, you're more attractive with friends. It's like. Yeah. It's not just that you have the friends. It's this idea what you just hit on of like the whole thing being weak. If you're being weak and you're showing that weakness, like women don't want to see a guy who's down on himself on this couch for so long right, right, before right. they're ready to move on, you know? Right. And if you're struggling and you don't have any friends, you're not going to, it's hard to get out of that. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's hard to get out of that. But if you have conversely, if you have a good, healthy group of guys, like I think it's a lot harder to fall into that. That yeah. real funk, you know? 
Yeah. I'll say this when my dad went through his divorce, he didn't really have a ton of friends. Yeah. And I remember that being like a weird thing to watch. Uh, because I had to kind of help my dad get through his divorce because he, when you're, he, he fell into that category of not even that my mom didn't want friends, but his like, Hey, marriage is just you and the family now. Mm -hmm. And then when the shit goes down, you have nobody to turn to. And that's yeah. sad. That's kind of like rough. Yourself. Yeah. You're isolated because you put all your chips in, uh, on one, one number and it's, you know, it, I don't th I think, I don't think that's healthy. I don't yeah. think that's healthy. Yeah. Um, however you want to do the Patreon, I'm going to break Yeah, it. listen, we're going to go over We're going to, I don't know who can stay and who can. I believe that they might have a, a hard outs, but we're going to go over to Patreon regardless to do the bonus show. Uh, we're going to do a little listener mail, maybe talk a little technique over there. Patreon.com slash Manschool202 if you guys want to support the show. It helps us keep the show running. Uh, plug your stuff, Matt. The podcast. Yeah, so, yeah, the, the podcast is Man of the Year. On all platforms, uh, we're, we're going to be on the Today Show in a couple weeks. What else we got, Carol? It's manoftheyearpodcast.com, um, and we're Man of the Year Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, everything. Uh, everything with me, you can you Google me, bitch. And uh, don't forget the consultation. You need a consultation, one-on-one -on -one consultation. DanteNero.com, click on consult. You can consult with me. Um, my Instagram is the Dante Nero. Uh, GYBB get your balls back WWDD what would Dante do the sexual revolutions be a podcast I love y'all check us out on the Patreon side peace